What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Byte for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. It's the follow-up after everything that dropped last week. We'll get to the Apple Watch Series 3, but first up, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. Now, Apple just released an update to iOS 11 with 11.0.1, which fixes an Exchange email server bug, but the biggest issue, battery life issues. Now, a recent report says the latest version of iOS has already been installed on 25% of iOS devices, and a lot of people are saying battery life is significant. This latest update doesn't help that yet, and yes, it depends on your usage, but even research firm Wandera analyzed the performance of 50,000 moderate to heavy users and found that it took roughly 96 minutes to drain a full battery in iOS 11 compared to 240 minutes in iOS 10. Now, I'm hearing the biggest complaints from people on the iPhone 6 or 6S. Results have been mixed, and some people aren't seeing these same issues, but is this happening to you, and on what phone? Let us know in the comments. All right, in another issue, Apple confirms they are working on a fix for iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, where some owners are hearing intermittent crackling noises when using them for phone calls. The Cupertino kids say it will be included in an upcoming software update. And IHS Market did their annual teardown of the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus to just find out how much do the newest iPhones cost. After taking them apart, the iPhone 8 Plus's build of materials came out to $288.08. Now, after manufacturing costs are factored in, it was only $17.78 more than the 7 Plus, which is actually pretty nice when you consider it has 32 gigs of storage more, improved processor, wireless charging, and an improved camera. Now, the iPhone 8, came in at $247.51. That's $9.57 higher than last year's iPhone 7. And no, this isn't to make you feel depressed about how much you're paying after all the overhead like marketing and packaging and shipping for the phone, and then helping Apple build its new fancy schmancy headquarters, as well as paying for Eddie Q's colorful keynote shirts. All right, Apple just dropped a new batch of developer betas for iOS 11.1, watchOS 4.1, tvOS 11.1, and macOS 10.13.1. Peer-to-peer payments or cloud integration with iMessage aren't in the iOS beta just yet, but the watchOS beta brings the first look at music streaming with Apple Music or your iCloud Music Library straight to the Apple Watch. Now, there's also a new radio app that gives you access to Beats One Radio or any Apple Music radio station as well, so developers, they get to play with that right now. And macOS High Sierra dropped this week. And to be honest, I haven't updated because knowing Apple's updates, I like to give it a few days. Now, the majority of feedback is that it breathes new life to 2016 computers with its speed. And I think the biggest feature I'm excited for is Safari's ability to prevent me from getting hammered by autoplay videos at every site. Like, I hate that. But a day one exploit found by ex-NSA analyst Patrick Wardle shows how anyone could run malicious code to pilfer the passwords in your keychain to everything from your Facebook, Twitter, and yes, even Bank of America accounts. So it's pretty much everything. That sounds fun, but I don't want you to get too paranoid about this. Now, Wardle hasn't revealed the full exploit code publicly, but Apple's expected to patch the issue eventually, as in hopefully like now. All right, let's talk Apple Watch Series 3. There are plenty of things that I like about it and things that can make it better. I've been using it over the past week nonstop, and we'll post my full review in a few days. That's really more in depth. That's what's out there because there are always things Apple just doesn't tell you about. Now, I love it for working out. It's really one of the best use cases that can make it special when you can still be connected to the world just in case anything happens. It's just all on this wrist. But the biggest issue I've discovered is with messages. Now, Apple has never said anything about it, and it's been confirmed by many users like you, which led to an official confirmation from Apple to CNET. The Apple Watch Series 3 needs to be connected to an iPhone to send SMS messages to non-iPhone users. Now, if the phone is off and you have no connection and no Wi-Fi, but just the watch connected to LTE, SMS messages will not work, only iMessages. And you know what? That matters, and really, to bury that, and after several hours on tech support with AT&T and Apple tech reps who couldn't figure it out, and then confirming it with other users to unearth that myself, you know what that gets? That's a bad Apple. Oh, hell no! But yes, I still really like the Apple Watch Series 3 LTE. It shines when it works, but you'll get all the down low with my upcoming review, and we'll dig into all of it. All right, in a good move, developers like Shazam are releasing standalone Apple Watch apps that don't require a connection to the iPhone and work over LTE. There's plenty like Twitter, Instagram, and others that still need the phone to work, so hopefully that's just a matter of time for developers. And check this out, the most anticipated hype beast phone right now, you know what it is, the iPhone 10 might be a whole lot harder to get than you think. 
Now, according to multiple reports, Apple is having significant yield problems with the 3D sensors used in the True Depth camera module for the iPhone 10. You know, all that good stuff tucked into that lovely looking notch. Now, the low rate of production of these sensors is the bottleneck, and reports say Apple is only getting out less than 10,000 units per day. Now, the 10 hasn't even reached mass production yet, and estimates say 10 million phones will be produced by the end of October, with an estimate of 40 million by the end of this year. Now, pre-order projections are targeting around 50 million units, which means Apple may not be able to even fulfill all those pre-orders before early 2018. So, for all of you that see me cry like a baby on Twitter when I lose out on getting a pair of Jordans or Yeezys or even the latest SNES Classic, you're all going to know exactly what that feels like. All right, so you might miss out on the iPhone 10, but I'm here to make you feel like a rock star thanks to our good friends at Belkin. Now, since Apple was so nice, took away our ability to listen to music and charge our headphones at the same time, thanks Apple, Belkin is hooking six of you up with their Charge Rockstar adapters. Now, three have a 3.5 millimeter audio connector and a lightning port for charging, while three others that I have have a lightning audio port and a lightning charging port. So these will work with the iPhone 7s, 8s, and 10s. And many of you keep asking me, what happened to the 9? Well, didn't anyone tell you? 7, 8, 9. So to win, all you have to do is identify the character on my shirt from last week's show, Tell me which rock star you want over email or Twitter, and I'll pick six of you randomly. So you know what? Let's get ready to dongle! And we really like to leave you all on a high note, so here it is. Thank you, Das Bull, on Twitter for this. Amazing. The iPhone 10. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.